William Thomas Emanuel was born May 31, 1955. He grew up in a musical family in the small mining town of Musselbrook, Australia. He was one of six children born to an engineer father and musically inclined mother, Linda. Tommy's mom loved music and would often sing songs while playing simple guitar chords. During World War II, when she was a teenager, Tommy's mother would go to the train station in Brisbane with her guitar and sing songs to the departing soldiers as they left for training. So music was always a big part of Tommy's life from the very beginning. <laughs> When he was old enough to walk, his mom would put his clothes in the machine and pull the handle, and Tommy would come running down the hall so that he could dance along with the spinning motions and rhythms of the machine. The family listened to a lot of country, gospel, rock and roll, and wartime songs back then. Tommy cites early influences like Jimmy Rogers, He's in the jailhouse now. Hank Williams, Hank Snow, Marty Robbins, Jim Reeves, as well as groups like the Beatles and Herman's Hermits. But his true first love was country and bluegrass. So when Tommy turned four years old, Linda gave him a little guitar for his birthday present. Seeing this, his older brother Phil insisted that he needed a guitar as well. Phil then declared himself the lead guitar player and relegated Tommy to the rhythm role. So Tommy's early musical life began as a rhythm guitar accompanist. <laughs> And to this day, Tommy highly recommends that any aspiring guitar player focus first on rhythm, on learning chords and keys, and how to back up songs and singers well. In his words, there's more work for a good accompanist than a lousy lead player. Tommy and Phil's early guitar skills were inadvertently fostered by their non-musical dad purchasing an electric guitar. As an engineer, their dad, Hugh, disassembled the expensive instrument out of technical curiosity rather than wanting to play it himself. Reassembled but rarely used, their father would stash the flashy axe under his bed, strictly off-limits to the kids. While he was away for work, Tommy and Phil couldn't resist the urge to pull out the guitar. Passing the baton back and forth, their brothers taught themselves guitar by ear through trial and error jam sessions, imitating records that they had heard on the radio. No lessons or sheet music were in sight. With those first notes ringing out from under the bed sealed the deal, soon sending both brothers on wanting journeys seeking stages rather than the schematics. Their father finally caught one of them playing it. This moment turned out to be a huge turning point in their life as their dad was actually beaming, happy to see his kids deepening interest in music. Having no formal training, Tommy learned everything by ear. So what's interesting is that to his young mind, listening to bands like The Shadows, he literally could not distinguish between the different guitar parts and instrumentation. He heard it all blended together as rhythms and riffs. What others clearly heard as separate bass, rhythm, and lead guitar parts, Tommy's brain interpreted as an integrated whole. Imagine you at the piano, doing this part here with your right hand. And he would work out how to play all the layers of sound on his one single guitar. When Tommy was six, legendary Australian rocker Cole Joy came through their small town and he was so impressed with the Emmanuel siblings' talent that he urged their father to let their kids play publicly more. Soon after, they won local band contests and a TV appearance. On the big day, Tommy's strict father nervously insisted that if asked, he needed to lie about his age, since the minimum age on TV was seven at the time. Thankfully for Tommy, nobody questioned his age and the kids wowed the studio audience with their musical chops. Coincidentally, an American TV producer happened to see the performance and told their father the kids needed to be seen across the country. So they sold their house, bought two station wagons and a tent, and hit the road as the Emmanuel Quartet, playing shows across Australia, starting in 1961. 
They toughed it out on the road while keeping up with their school lessons by mail through a correspondence course system. Their supervisor signed on as a Johnny Cash-esque singer to round out the show, and they added a female vocalist as well. It was definitely an unorthodox upbringing, doing schoolwork each morning before gearing up for marathon performances every night in a different town. They crisscrossed Australia like a down-under partridge family. The Emanuel Quartet traveled around Australia for years, with young Tommy playing guitar and doing the first half of their marathon shows before heading to bed on the venue's back seats. His mom cooked meals over open fires and washed their clothes in rivers as they crisscrossed the countryside, bringing music to remote towns. Tommy recalls falling asleep many nights gazing up at the stars after another local hall gig powered by the afternoon's makeshift sidewalk performance that helped draw crowds. Though perpetually broke and piloting unreliable vehicles down rough dirt roads, the family remained happy with their frenetic touring schedule. In 1966, Tommy's father passed away at the age of 49. He died from heart problems, leaving behind a grieving family in the small town of Musselbrook, Australia. Hugh's death occurred during a pivotal time in Tommy's life, as Tommy was only 11 years old at the time. The loss of his father profoundly affected Tommy and his siblings as they navigated the challenges of grief while continuing to pursue their musical aspirations. After their father passed away, government child welfare authorities forced the Emanuel family band off the road because they weren't regularly attending school. They settled into a town called Parks, where Tommy and his brother Phil formed a local band called the Trailblazers. They played weddings, parties, dances, even returned soldiers clubs to support their mother and keep the family fed and housed. Around this time, country star Buddy Williams took the Emanuel brothers under his wing. Tommy recorded on some of Buddy's albums in the 70s before being made to finally attend school regularly. As a teen, Tommy won local talent shows that got attention nationally. In his late teens and 20s, he played in rock bands and as a session guitarist. <laughs> After relocating to the U.S. in the early 80s, intent on breaking into the lucrative L.A. scene, Tommy landed ever-increasing, high-profile gigs. Upon his arrival, Tommy Emanuel wasted no time in delving into the bustling music scene, where he swiftly began making connections and establishing himself as a session guitarist. His dynamic playing style quickly caught the attention of industry insiders, opening doors to a myriad of opportunities. Among his earliest collaborations was his work with acclaimed rock band Air Supply, for whom Emmanuel lent his distinctive skills to their album Now and Forever, released in 1982. His contributions added depth and texture to the band's sound. During this time, Tommy also did sessions for Men at Work, as well as the band Dragon on their album Dreams of Ordinary Men, which went platinum. Dragon became one of Australia's biggest bands during the 80s. As Tommy's reputation continued to grow, he found himself collaborating with an array of artists from different genres, further expanding his musical repertoire. One notable collaboration during this period was his work with Australian rock legend Stevie Wright, former frontman of the iconic band The Easy Beats. Tommy joined Stevie on tour as a sideman. This collaboration highlighted Tommy's ability to seamlessly blend elements of rock, blues, and country into his playing earning him recognition as a dynamic and versatile guitar player. <laughs> Among his notable recording credits during this period was Tommy's work with acclaimed producer and musician Quincy Jones, for whom Tommy provided guitar tracks on various studio sessions. One standout during the late 80s was Tommy's collaboration with Tina Turner. Emmanuel joined Turner on tour, where his energetic guitar playing added a fresh dimension to her electrifying live performances. Tommy continued to lend his talents to recording sessions for prominent artists. He recorded the Michael Jackson song, Much Too Soon, which is on Jackson's first posthumously released album called Michael. This piece showcases Tommy's deft acoustic work, where his dynamics fit perfectly with Michael's singing voice. <laughs> Tommy also participated in recording sessions for Kenny Rogers, contributing his unique guitar style to Rogers' signature country sound. 
Despite his busy schedule, Tommy Emanuel remained dedicated to his solo career, performing live and continuing to refine his distinctive style as a guitarist. Tommy's life definitely was not without its hardships, however. Throughout the 80s, Tommy's drug use escalated as he became increasingly immersed in the music industry, working as a session player, songwriter, and touring musician. He attributed part of the escalation to the prevalent culture surrounding drug use, which normalized substances as a pick-me-up, similar to coffee, but definitely with much more of a kick. Despite his success in the industry, Tommy's battle with addiction threatened to overshadow his musical achievements. Acknowledging the severity of his addiction, Tommy Emanuel sought therapy to address the challenge head-on, describing the process as beautiful yet difficult. Embracing surrender as a pivotal step in his recovery, Tommy expressed gratitude for his newfound sobriety, recognizing the immense value of living fully present in his own life. Many people don't get the chance to get into recovery, and Tommy's career arc is a testament to being able to stay out of the drug slump which would have taken its toll on his health anyway. Building on the successes of the previous decade, Emmanuel embarked on a series of collaborations and solo endeavors. <music> Among his notable collabs during this period was his work with Australian singer-songwriter Olivia Newton-John. Emmanuel contributed his skills to Olivia's album Back to Basics, The Essential Collection, 1971 through 1992. Tommy also collaborated with his brother Phil, touring Australia in the early 90s under the name The Emmanuel Brothers. Together they released Terra Firma, an instrumental album that did well on the charts and also won a 1995 ARIA Best Adult Contemporary Album Award. Tommy also recorded with Sheena Easton, Melissa Manchester, and Engelbert Humperdinck during this time. Among his notable solo releases during this period was his album The Journey, which was released in 1993. The album featured a collection of originals and covers, all performed with Tommy's trademark virtuosity and musicality. Tracks such as Train to Dusseldorf and Questions highlighted Tommy's ability to blend intricate finger-style techniques with emotive melodies. <laughs> Around this time, Tommy also got the opportunity to collaborate with Chet Atkins, who was Tommy's guitar hero pretty much most of his life. Their playing styles complemented one another. Beyond their musical collaborations, Chet Atkins played a pivotal role in shaping Tommy's artistic development. Chet served as a positive role model for Tommy, and he really helped him shape his own unique style. In 1999, when Tommy Emanuel got the esteemed title of Certified Guitar Player, it was Chet Atkins who actually presented that award to him. Chet recognized him as both a kindred spirit and protege. It's a granite. It'll be around when we're all gone. And people will be saying, who that cat is? <laughs> but anyway, it says the CGP presented to Tommy Emanuel recognition of his contribution to the art of finger picking. When I look at this, all I have to say is I learn from the best. Tommy and Chet Atkins' friendship endured until Atkins' passing in 2001. In the mid-90s, Tommy collaborated with Australian singer John Farnham. Tommy joined Farnham's band for a time, contributing his guitar skills to Farnham's live performances and studio recordings. Yes, I know how to do But I burn so their collaboration culminated in the highly successful John Farnham and Tom Jones Together in Concert album, released in 1994. In 1996, Tommy Emanuel released his album Can't Get Enough. This album featured a collection of originals and covers, including Luttrell and Padre. Also in 1996, Tommy Emanuel collaborated with Dolly Parton. This was for her album Treasures. Tommy and his brother Phil's appearance at the 2000 Olympics was a defining moment in their musical careers. As part of the closing ceremony, which was watched by nearly 3 billion viewers worldwide, the Emanuel brothers had the distinct honor of representing their country on the global stage. In 2002, Tommy Emanuel again collaborated with John Farnham, resulting in the highly successful The Last Time album. Tommy also put out his solo release in 2004, 
called The Endless Road. This album featured the standout track Waltzing Matilda. In 2007, Tommy also collaborated with Australian singer-songwriter Katie Noonan for her album Two of a Kind. This collaboration resulted in a collection of soulful and intimate tracks. In 2008, Tommy released Center Stage. This album featured two real standout tracks, Classical Gas and Moon River. which have become a huge staple in his live shows. His work with American jazz-influenced blues guitarist Robin Ford showcased his versatility and adaptability as a musician. Tommy and Robin released the collaborative album Songs for Judy in 2009. In 2010, Tommy and his brother Phil reunited for a 50th anniversary tour. In 2013, Tommy and Manuel teamed up with legendary British guitarist Martin Taylor. Together, they released the album The Colonel and the Governor featuring a collection of exquisite guitar duets. Tracks such as Bernie's Tune and Heat Wave showcase their masterful technique together, earning critical acclaim. Tommy also released It's Never Too Late in 2015, featuring tracks One Day in Old Photographs. This album was more geared towards Tommy's ability to weave intricate melodies and emotive storytelling into his music. His work with Australian singer-songwriter Troy Kasser Daly resulted in the album The Great Country Songbook in 2013, featuring a collection of classic country songs reimagined with a fresh and modern twist. In 2018, Tommy released his album Accomplice One. This featured a collection of collaborations with a diverse array of artists, including Jason Isbell, Amanda Shires, and Rodney Krell, among others. Some standout tracks on this album include Deep River Blues and Song and Dance Man, to name a few. The untimely passing of Tommy's older brother Phil in 2018 due to an asthma attack was a profound loss for both the Emmanuel family and the wider music community. Tommy had been touring in the UK during this time and was on his way back to Australia when he had heard the news. Phil's musical journey began alongside Tommy at a young age. They shared a passion for music and a deep brotherly bond that would resonate throughout their careers. Phil's technical prowess and raw talent earned him recognition as one of Australia's finest guitarists. contributions to the music scene left a mark on fans and fellow musicians alike. Throughout their careers, the Emanuel brothers collaborated on numerous projects. Tommy took his death especially hard. Through the various tragedies and hardships in his life, Tommy Emanuel has been able to move through it all with grace and continued to enjoy success by putting it always out there on stage. From the late 2010s onwards, Tommy Emanuel's illustrious journey as a guitarist has flourished, punctuated by an array of collaborations and solo endeavors that have further entrenched his position as a preeminent global musician. This era has seen Emanuel engage with a wide spectrum of artists, broadening his musical landscape and elevating his creative expression. A highlight of this phase is his partnership with American jazz guitarist John Knowles, culminating in the 2019 release of Heart Songs. This album, a compilation of masterful guitar duets, showcases their exceptional skill and musical rapport. Moreover, Tommy Emanuel's solo career has seen significant growth during this time, with several album releases that underscore his unique talent and artistic vision. Though self-taught and unable to read music, Tommy built an iconic style combining finger-picking elements of country, blues, jazz, bluegrass, and rock. His intense musicality and sense of rhythm has captured fans worldwide. In live performances, he uses minimal effects and no set list, instead reading audiences and playing what feels right. His recordings are mostly one-take affairs, keeping that improvisational live energy throughout. Over the years, Tommy gained huge chops as a versatile and intricate rhythm player who could emulate the sound of an entire band all by himself on one guitar. His energetic and grooving style made him an in-demand session player at a very young age, and he went on to achieve immense success and accolades as a master guitarist known for his technical precision and unmatched live performing abilities. 
But it all started with a basic curiosity about chord shapes, rhythms, and melody, the primal ingredients of music that Tommy connected with at the deepest levels right from the start. His innate and almost supernatural abilities to deconstruct and reconstitute the core aspects of musical arrangements is a unique gift that combined his non-stop work ethic to make him one of the most acclaimed guitar players in history. So if you like what you see here, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button and join the family. And while you're at it, if you could kindly smack that like button, I do appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching.